Welcome to lesson four on the general form of the equation of the line. Uh, this is still on the unit linear functions. So what is the general form of a line? We're going to skip the introduction problems here because we're going to repeat some of the examples here. The general form of the equation of the line is in the form ax plus by plus c all equal to zero where all the other expressions are all on one side and what is on the other side is just zero. Now take note that in the general form, a, b, and c are just integers. If you can recall what integers are, integers mean um, we cannot see, we should not be seeing any fractions there or decimals. Um, it can be positive or negative numbers as well. So a, b, and c should be just uh, integers there, uh, no fractions. And a, we want to make a, which is the number beside x, always positive. So uh, general form is just another form of a line where we write it as, as a notation that has specific characteristics, which is in this case all of these characteristics that I have mentioned. Um, how do we write an equation of the line in general form? Well, we're given first description and we have to write the equation of the line. So there are two ways to write an equation of the line. First, if we know the slope and the y-intercept, we can use the form y equals mx plus b. Second, if we don't know the y-intercept but we know a point and a slope on the line, then we can um, write the equation of the line as y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. After we started in uh, either of these two things, again, um, these two things can dictate to us where do we start with based on the information that we're given. And after we figure that out, um, we can write the equations of the line either in this uh, starting form here or this starting form into a general form. And the general form is described over here. So let's look at number, uh, let us see here for example, and say, what is the equation of the line in general form here? So I'm a, I wanna do it in two ways. Uh, first one, I ask myself, can I write the equation of the line in this form first? Okay, so this is uh, method A. So for me to figure out the equation of the line in this form, I have to ask myself, do I know B here? So if I'm gonna go, yeah, I know actually B, B is negative three. Remember B is the y-intercept. And do I know the slope? The slope is going up three and to the left one so my slope is negative three i mean positive three over negative one so it's positive three over negative one or that's equal to negative one so the equation of my line here is y equal to uh negative sorry this is not negative one this is negative three uh, negative 3. So that's y equals negative 3x minus 3. So it's y equals mx plus b. So in this case, this is now the equation of my line in the slope-intercept form. Okay, slope-intercept form. That would be my equation of the line. How do we write it in general form? So first of all, we want to put everything all on one side. So it's either I'm going to put the y on this side here so nothing is left on this side, or it's either I put all these guys on the other side so that nothing is left on the right side. Either way should be correct. So the easiest of all of this, obviously, is to put y on the other side because we're only going to um, move one expression. So if you move, move here on the other side, it becomes minus y here and minus y on the other side as well. So get rid of this. If this is equal to zero and this is negative three x minus three minus y. Now, one of the criteria of the general form is there should be no fractions. So here we're happy because there are no fractions in our given. 
And what another criteria is that, okay, where's my page here? I lost my page. Another criteria is that um, your A value, which is the number beside X, should always be positive. So if we go to our um, line here and say, what is the number beside X? The number beside X is negative three. So it's a negative number. How do we make it positive? We can multiply the entire equation by negative one. So uh, we'll multiply zero by negative one. It's still zero. We need to make this uh, positive. So we multiply it by negative one. So this would be positive three X. This would be positive three and that would be positive Y. So again, what did we do here? We multiply every single thing by negative one because the general form tells us that X there should be positive. If X is already positive, there is no need for us to multiply it by negative one. So the equation of the line in general form is three X plus Y plus three is equal to zero. I just switch things around, but that should be okay. So here we are, okay? Now, um, what if we have method A and we didn't use the Y equals M uh, method B and we didn't use Y equals MX plus B, but we use Y minus Y1 equal to MX minus X1. So how do we do that? So in order for us to do that, we need to pick another point in the graph. So I pick this point here. This point is negative three comma six. So let's pick that point as negative three comma six. And we know for a fact that your slope is negative three. We already know what the slope is. So y minus y1, well, my y1 is um, six equal to m x minus x1, which is negative three. So continuing, continuing on with this process, with negative three, I wanna do minus a negative first and convert it to a plus. And this is my equation in the point slope form. Okay, that's point slope form. So for us to convert it into a general form, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, expanding here. So y minus six, Multiply these two, negative three X, negative three times uh, positive three is negative nine. And general form, putting them all on the other side. So we're gonna put these guys over here and this over here because the general form should be equal to zero on one side. So Y minus six, if you put the negative three X on this side, which means we add three X, and if we put the negative nine on the other side, which means we add nine because we have to undo the operation. So uh, the last thing would be three X plus Y negative six plus nine is just positive three equal to zero. So as you can see, this gives you an idea that whatever you start with, whether you start with Y equals MX plus B, or y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. Uh, towards the end, if we write the equation in general form, you're going to end up with the same line. So example one, how do we write uh, an equation, a uh, general form, an equation in general form to uh, an equation which is the slope intercept form and how do we graph it from there. So as you can see, this equation here is in the general form. So to write it in the slope intercept form, so to convert it into y equals mx plus b, we're gonna leave y by itself. So here we can say, let's write it down, two x minus y plus three is equal to zero. If we're gonna leave y by itself, well, the easiest way to do it is I'm going to put the Y on the other side. So I'm going to add Y over here. So then what's left here is 2X plus 3 because Y will be canceled out here and, and 0 plus Y is just equal to, to Y. So our equation would be, I'm just going to write it like this, Y equals 2X plus 3. So now it's the same form as Y equal to MX plus B. Your M here is two and your B here is three. 
which means your graph is gonna hit the x, uh, the, the y axis at three. And uh, from there, we will be finding another point by using your slope. Your slope is written as two over one, which means this is your rise and this is your run. So how do we write that down? Uh, rise two, one, two, and run one. Rise two and run one, rise two and run one. So our equation would look like this. Let's do example two here, and we're gonna graph it um, using the X and the Y intercepts this time. So if you can recall uh, example one here, we graph this general form by converting it first to Y equals MX plus B. And from there, we identified M and your B and graph the line from there. Another way to graph our line is to uh, convert it or find, I mean, the X and the Y intercepts. So let's do the ones here with fractions. Fractions are a bit really hard to manipulate. So if we have the opportunity to get rid of the fractions, let's do it. So in this case, we have denominator of 5 and denominator of 2. To get rid of the fraction, we have to multiply your lowest common multiple of 5 and 2, which is in this case 10. So your LCM of 5 and 2 is 10. 10 is the number that would get rid of the fraction, and we'll show that later in our step here. So if we multiply every single thing here by 10, this would be 10 times 1 fifth x minus 10 times 1 half y minus 10 times 1 equal to 10 times 0. Well, 10 times 0 is just 0. 10 times 1 is just 10. Um, here, we can cancel this out and say 10 divided by 5 is just 2, so that's actually 2x. Minus 10 divided by 2 is 5, so that's actually minus 5y. Or you can just multiply 1 fifth times 10, and then you can also multiply 10 times 1 half. So now our equation is a little bit easy to manipulate now. Now, how do we graph this general form of the line? So the first way that we can do it is using the example that we did in example one. A second way to do it is using the intercepts. We did intercepts um, in our previous unit, uh, relations and functions. So let's recall how we did that. So first, we can figure out what is your x-intercept. Our x-intercept happens when y is 0. So let's take our equation. Our equation is 2x minus 5y minus 10 equal to 0. If we let y equal to 0, so this whole thing here is gone, So then we can get rid of that and say um, 2x minus 10 is equal to 0. Uh, we add 10 on both sides. So 2x is equal to 10. Divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to 5. So what does that mean? When x is 5, y is 0. Or your graph crosses the x-axis at 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is our point 5, comma, 0. Um, how do we find your y-intercept? So you re can recall y-intercept happens when x is 0. So let's copy your general form of the line here. Uh, when x is 0, so this is gone because 2 times 0 is 0, then what's left is just negative 5y minus 10 equal to 0. Uh, we add 10 on both sides. So negative 5y is equal to 10. Divide both sides by negative 5. Your y there is equal to negative 2. So what does that mean? Your graph 
crosses the y-axis at negative 2. So your graph will be over here. So that's what, let's put the point first. The point is at when x is 0, y is at negative 2. So it's right here. Yeah, so then we'd be able to graph the line by just connecting the two. So number three here is we're going to determine the general form of each line using uh, the graph below that you have. So in order for us to write an equation of the line, we got to start by either choosing y equals mx plus b or y minus y1 um, equal to m times x minus x1, which is the point slope form. So obviously, y equals mx plus b is an easier form of the equation. However, if b is not available for us to identify, we can't do or use the equation y equals mx plus b. We can actually uh, use it, but um, we're going to do some manipulation that um, uh, a different way of, of writing down the equation of the line uh, using also y equals mx plus b. Um, but I would encourage you to obviously explore when to best use the y equals mx plus b and when to best use the y minus y1 um, equal to m times x minus x1. So here in this case, uh, do I know your M? Well, yeah, I know my M. I just need two points and then I can calculate one, two. So go up by one and uh, to the right two. So I know my slope is one half. Do I know my B? Here's my B. Um, I don't exactly know my B. I can see that it's probably just halfway those two points, but I'm not really, really sure. So in this case, b is not a good, uh, y equals mx plus b would not be uh, a good option for us to do, um, although we can all st st still use that by uh, manipulating it a little bit differently. But um, in this case then, I need to identify a point in your graph so that I can use the y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1 formula. So in this case, I'm going to choose this point here. This point is 7, comma negative 2. So now after choosing that point, I am now going to write the point slope form of my line. So this is y minus your y1 is negative 2, your m is 1 half, and your x sub 1 is 7. So this I can write as plus 2, and then I could do 1 half um, x minus 7. Now, what I need to do is to write this in general form, so there should be no fractions involved there. One thing that I could do is to get rid of the fraction first by multiplying this by, by not by 7, but by 2, so I can get rid of the 1 half, so I can get rid of that, and what's left is just 1 in brackets x minus 7 on one side. But take note that if I multiply one side with, with 2, I also need to multiply the other side with 2. So take note that we put this in all in brackets. We have 2 times y is 2y. 2 times 2 is positive 4. And then we can say that 1 times all of these expression is just the same expression. So now we don't have any more fractions. The last step that we need to do is put them all on one side because the general form tells you to put them all in one side. So I can put the x here and the 7 here on this side. So this would be 2y plus 4. Remember, if you're putting it all on, the, on one side, you're, you're doing the opposite operation. So it's minus x plus 7 equal to 0. Uh, I can say 2y minus x plus 4 and 7 is 11 equal to 0. The last thing that I need to know is, is my x positive? Well, my x is not positive but negative, so what I can do is I can switch every sign around, so this would be x minus 2y minus 11 equal to 0. Again, what are we doing there? We're actually just multiplying it by negative 1. So now this is the equation in general form. What about number two? Okay, letter B here, uh, we can check first what would be our slope. 
So our slope, let's pick two points. This point and ooh, this point here. Okay, so I go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so I'm going up eight and one, two, three. I go to the left three. So my slope is negative three. Um, can I identify my B? Yeah, here. This is my B. My B is actually negative eight. So in this case, I can use y equals mx plus b. So it will be y equals mx plus b. So y is 8 over negative 3x minus 8. Now, I need to get rid of the fraction. So I multiply everything by... Uh, I can multiply everything by negative 3, no problem. So negative 3 times y is negative 3y. Negative 3 times negative 3 here cancels it out. It will be positive 8x. And negative 3 times negative 8 is positive 24. Please take note of those positives and negatives as well as multiplication. So I did this, okay? I multiply everything. So now I need to put all the terms on one side. So it's easier for me to put the y over here. So this becomes 0. This becomes 8x plus 24. And then if we put that negative 3y on the other side, it will be positive 3y. So now you ask yourself the question, do you have any fractions? No. Is x positive? Yes. So then we already have written it down correctly in general form. Uh, example 5 is uh, an appliance store is having a sale on fans and lamps. Fan costs $10 and lamp costs $20. At the end of the day, uh, there was a revenue of $120. So if X is the number of fans uh, that were sold, X is the number of fans that were sold. Let's not use this one here. Uh, sold and Y is the number of uh, lamps sold the revenue or the sales would be equal to 10 times uh, the number of fans sold plus 20 times the number of lamp sold is actually equal to 120 dollars so 10x tells us we sold x fans for 10 dollars each we sold y fan, uh, lamps for 20 dollars each at the end we added all of those uh, sold uh, items and that equals to $120. So there's no dependent and independent variable here. Uh, our equation now would be 10x plus 20 is equal to 120. So how do we graph this equation? We can actually graph this equation using the x and the y intercept. So if we graph this equation 10x plus 20y equal to, to 120, um, then we can say that if x is equal to 0, this is your y-intercept. Uh, if x is equal to 0, then we say 20y is equal to 120 because x will be here, 0 here. Uh, so this will all be gone. And then divided by both sides by, by 20, so y is equal to 6. So when x is 0, y is equal to 6. Uh, what about we have uh, x-intercept? So 10x plus 20y equal to 120. x-intercept happens when your y is 0. So in this case, this guy is gone. 10x is equal to 120. Divide both sides by 10, x is equal to 12. So when your x is 12, y is actually equal to 0. So let's put that here. Our x a while ago is the number of fans sold. So we're going to use this graph here. So this is our x. And our y is the number of lamps sold. So that would be your y. So in this case... Um, we can sell uh, zero, zero uh, fans uh, and six lamps right here. So we can have zero comma six. So it's over here. 
This is one, two, three, four, five, six. Or we can also have 12 comma zero. Again, this a relationship is fans to lamps. Uh, 12 comma zero. Okay. And if we join the two lines here, we can think about all the points that are possible in there can be possible combinations of the fans and um, uh, and lamps that we have sold. But again, we're not going to make it a continuous line because we can't sell one and a half fans. So uh, let's try then if we sold. Um, let's actually put them all on one line and see where we are. So it looks like your line here, I want to use a straight edge here so that we can, oops, let's see if, if I can do this really quickly. All right, let's see if I can, uh, if we can identify some points here. Uh, does this point exist? This point is 2 comma 5. So 2 comma 5. Uh, fans and lamps. Is that possible to sell two fans and five lamps? So two fans, a fan is $10, right? So two fans is $20 plus uh, five lamps, which is five times 20, which is 100. So yes, that is possible because our, our point is uh, existing. Uh, this also this is also probably possible. This is uh, four fans and four lamps. So four fans and four lamps would give us forty dollars plus um, four times twenty is eighty. So that's also a hundred and twenty. So that's also a possibility. So we probably would know now what is our pattern. We can also six fans uh, sell six fans and three lamps, um, eight fans and uh, two lamps, ten fans and one lamp, and then one uh, twelve fans and no lamps. Okay, that ends our section on general form.